So you have probably heard this phrase before and it's something that the old generation agrees with which is cash is king. And in a recent survey by finders.com, it revealed that 33% of Singaporeans view cash as the best investment above stock, properties and cryptocurrencies. And you must be wondering why is this so, or maybe those people are boomers because only the older generation view cash as an asset. And you will be right, because 42% of those indicated that cash is the best asset are aged between 55 to 65 years old. But what does cash is king mean and how can we fully utilize it and give ourselves an unfair advantage? Hi, my name is Jordan and welcome to the channel. And stay to see if holding cash is probably something you can do during these tough times. And we are probably going to start to feel the effects of what will be probably one of the largest economic downturns that the world has seen in the last few decades. With inflation rising at a crazy rate, imports and exports coming to a halt, and much more bad news coming out every single day. In the previous economic downturn in 2008, the younger me was just parting out like crazy. And at that point in time, I was fresh out of the army. I just got a new job at the lab. And yes, I was studying biomedical engineering, but I'm doing something completely different right now, but that's for another video. With a new job came an influx of money, and with money came spending and enjoying myself. I didn't really understand the concept of saving and why I should save because YOLO. But today, the smarter me, or I would assume that I'm a little smarter, having cash in bad times gives you an edge because people are wired in a strange way to sell when prices are dropping and to buy when prices are up. And if you don't believe me, you will see people cutting their losses from various different assets, which ultimately causes a sell-off. And when people sell when the price dips, which causes more people to sell, which then leads to a cascading effect of people selling off their stocks and their investments altogether. Dip, 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 dip. But ironically, the reverse is true. When the markets are down, there will be a select group of people who will start buying and accumulating, which gives them the upside potential when the market starts to recover. But this is a very counterintuitive mindset that many struggle to overcome. So back to why cash is important during bad times. Many people think cash is king, but at the same time, cash is also useless. So if you have a truckload of cash, but you do not do anything with it, this cash is as good as paper sitting on a desk. However, if you use this cash to purchase equities, crypto, or income generating assets, this makes your cash more valuable because your cash is put into an instrument that has potential to grow 5%, 10%, or 20% on an annual basis. But some of you might think, Yeah Jordan, but it's high risk and we might lose all our money. Yes, there will be risk, but I'm not saying to put everything you have into the market. So you could do something like a 10 to 20% into the market, which gives you a hedge against inflation. So let's say if you spend $1,000 to buy VOO in early 2021, which comes out to roughly 3 shares because VOO was priced at $339. VOO price today, in May 2021, is at $365. This means you have made a gain of 7% over a course of maybe 5 to 6 months. So this might look very small, but when accumulated over time, this can be something that can tide you through your retirement. And if you choose not to sell it, it beats the bank's interest rate and at the same time pays you a small dividend which you can compound your money for. So ask yourself, why didn't you purchase VOO back in early 2021? So most people will say, oh, it's so expensive, the market is going to tank, I'll sell the sidelines and continue to watch. And continue watching they did. But the main reason I feel that people do not invest is that they think cash is king because by holding onto cash, it gives a euphoric feeling of having a certain net worth or having cash on hand that makes them feel good. But what they don't see is that the value of their cash is decreasing in value day by day due to inflation, 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 inflation. inflation. And when you start understanding that cash is king, but cash is also useless, you'll start to realize that if you do not activate your money to earn more money for yourself, you will end up with lesser money, not physically, but in the terms of value. And on top of that, by investing your money, you might get some dividends, 
which is passive income for you to either pay for your bills or to reinvest or to buy that Lamborghini that you always want. But no, I kid, do not buy that Lamborghini because it's super expensive and probably not worth its money. So now the important question here is how much cash do I have set aside for investing? So there is no definite answer for this because everyone is different. So for me, I invest roughly $1,000 to $2,000 per month into cryptocurrencies and stocks. And they range from some ETFs to individual stocks that I really want to hold. But when it's dividend time, I do get a little bit of spare cash from all these dividend stocks that helps to purchase more shares. And for a start, I think a good habit is to have 6 months of income set aside which will help you pay off expenses in the event you lose your job. But with the current inflation rate, maybe having a 12 months of income doesn't seem too bad either. Because we've got no idea how long this recession might last. So for example, if you take home $2,500 per month, ideally you should have about $15,000 sitting in a bank as the backup. But if you want 12 months of income set aside, that number will roughly be $30,000. And anything that you earn after that can be used to invest. But do remember to have some money set aside for purchases that you might need. For example, your daily necessities, your bills, your entertainment fund. Because life isn't just all about money. Money, 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 money. But now the hard part here is reaching the 6 month fund. There are 2 main trend of thoughts here on how to achieve that and the first one is to really save really hard for the short period of time which will be really really difficult for a start but once you get the wheels moving, it will start to get easier and easier. The second train of thought here is to invest and save concurrently. So this will require you to be much more disciplined because you'll be splitting your money into investing and savings. And chances are it will take you a long time to reach that 6 or 12 months buffer which can be pretty tiring. But on the flip side, you will start seeing your investments come to life and this can be a huge motivator as well. It's alive! It's alive! So for me, I use the invest and save method where I put part of my savings into ETF, stocks and some crypto which allows me to see some fruits of my labor and at the same time grow my savings as well. And when it's time to take profits from my crypto portfolio, that money is reinvested back into stocks or kept as cash to maintain a buffer which will constantly grow over time. So with my strategy, my cash holdings might be small but my investment holdings are increasing due to dividend yields and unrealized profits. However, one might come to a point which we are in currently right now. So with the markets coming down, it can and will be challenging because I have a majority of my net worth invested and a small portion of cash holdings which isn't something very good. On one hand, when there are really good opportunities to purchase stocks that I really want in the market, I might not have that cash flow to do so because I still need money to pay for my necessities. And with the prices going down, this means that my investments will go down as well which means my net worth will be affected although it's just a number. But I'm more worried about not having that cash flow to purchase the stocks that I really want during a discount period. So nonetheless, there are no right or wrong with either strategy. The main difference here is how much discipline you have, how much risk tolerance you have, and that will make you pick either of the two. So just understand that this strategy is not a one size fit all and it's really liquid. Which means that it can be a mix of both strategy and you might be coming up with your own strategy which I really hope that you guys do one day. So if you have found value in this video, do me a small favor by smashing the like button, it helps the channel a lot. And subscribe if you haven't, turn on the bells to get a notification and I'll see you in the next one.